Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, February the 27th. I'd like to start by thanking our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this show possible every couple of weeks. My first guest is Mazen al Nahawi. I guess we're going to be talking about uh, what's going on in the world. Um, Mainly in Venezuela, maybe. Sir. Let's start with Venezuela. I mean, it, to me, it's just a disgrace the way the story is being presented by our media because Canadians are being given one story, which is the, to me, it's the corporate story, and nothing else is allowed. So it's so one-sided, and people believe it, I think. Um, first of all, thanks, Jack, for having me on your program. And uh, when it comes to, uh, to Latin America in general, USA it's, has known history back there. Uh, uh, there is one of the books I gave to the director, uh, Will here in the program, called uh, The Open Veins of, Open. Veins of uh, Latin America. It's kind of uh, a good introduction about that history the USA has there. Our main problem here when we talk about that history, nobody in our media like has any clue about that history. Like, We never had before uh, coups manipulated or directed by the American, like what happened in Chile, kicking out Allende, the democratically elected uh, president there, and bringing Pinochet, one of the worst dictators there. So from that book yesterday, I was going, just reading a little bit on it, and uh, there was a Guatemalan uh, foreign minister, like 125 years ago. From where? From Guatemala, Guatemala. Uh, a, f a foreign minister right. made a statement, actually it's valid forever, that it's the one who brought the disease to Latin America cannot bring cure to it. USA, the one who brought, and before, I mean, if we consider the long colonial history from European and South America and later the USA in the late 19th century, controlling everything there. there. Uh, just look for the United Fruit Company, and it's what did and for the Lat Latin American people, uh, starving them, uh, uh, forbidding them. I mean, just they are basically farmer in the land and period, I mean, and living worse conditions. This is the history of the USA there. So the same state now telling us that it's going because of human rights of Venezuela, want to go and fix the situation there. And our outlet, media outlet, is going along with that. If somebody really cared about human rights, what happened in Yemen, and what happened in a lot of regions around the world, I mean, I'm mentioning Yemen because it, this is one, recently one of the worst catastrophe we're having here. Kids dying, starving, people bombarded, and, one of the biggest joke I'm reading yesterday that the Congress now, the American Congress, asking about how some weapons the American gave to Saudi Emirati and Emirati end up in the hand of Al Qaeda group in Yemen. So, who did the whole this mess up, whether in Yemen or in Latin America or Haiti or or all the so-called third world country? USA had hand in and everything. When, I mean, I agree with you 100%, but when we say the USA, we certainly don't mean the people of the USA. I, they're, they're, okay. I don't. I kind of disagree okay. a little okay. bit. <laughs> Let me have my piece. Of, I don't mean the people of the United States. I mean the people who run and control the United States. And they are totally screwing up millions and millions and millions of people within the United States and have for decades. They don't care any more about the American people than they care about the people anywhere else. That's the, the ruling class. Uh, now, th I have no doubt that the American people are themselves are victim of their media and state and the 24-hour manipulation of the news and falsifying everything, making the victim criminal and a criminal victim. But in the end, these are the, ba the who pay tax and vote for officials to be in office. Who voted for Trump? It's not the people from Venezuela or China, the American people. 
And they may be, I mean, yeah, they have their own struggle there, but, you know, USA has a long history of aggression. They started by stealing the land, basically, from the native. Then uh, their slavery, taking, after that, going over to Cuba and Philippines, Hawaii, become an imperial power, when everybody buy their American product first. So I think people know should boycott the American product. I, when I go to market, I look if it's the USA, I would never buy it. I'm not going to pay a penny for a state go bomb people in Yemen and bring lies about Venezuela and bombarded in Hawaii with the Marines when they have earthquake and keep these lies. I mean, I mean, why do I need to buy from a state like that? But again, uh, we have our outlet media here. I don't really blame them. They, their job is not to provide actual journalism. They are business. Bell Media, it's about mobile phone and other businesses. I mean, there is a big monopoly and everything. These businesses are connected very well in the USA. I said it before, it's like two butts in one underwear. One of them masculine, the American one, and one of them feminine. <laughs> I don't know. But this is what the USA and Canada, when you're talking about relationship between Canada and USA and connection between business. This, our problem with these businesses controlling our media outlet, controlling our officials. So in the end, I don't really see the difference between Trudeau or, or Trump. Both of them are lawyers. One of them, obvious, actually, I prefer Trump. Trump, you can see it immediately. He is a racist, disgusting human being. But Trudeau is a lawyer and presenting you the, the pretty face, walking with the gays, marching while signing up pipelines, lying. And just ask native people about Trudeau. First thing they tell you, he is a lawyer, and he promised many things, reconciliation, and this is the hypocrisy here. Considering the colonial settler history in Canada, and what is Canada continue to do in South America now, there is a connection Yeah, the here. whole thing, I mean, to me, the whole thing is a farce. You know, the world that most of us think we live in is not, is not, the real world, I mean, in terms of, of just what we're told and the way we're treated. You know, we're told we're a democracy, you know. I just, I mean, we're not a democracy, folks. Uh, we're told we have a free press. We don't have a free press. The media is completely controlled by the 1% of the 1%. Uh, I'm a member of the NDP, but I would never vote for them. I mean, because the leadership of the party has nothing to do with the they don't care. They're, they're career politicians. And they're having a great time. They're doing great. But they don't really care about us. They work for the, the ruling class. And let's talk a little bit about the, I, I, I don't know what the term is, the caravan of people that are coming to the U.S. border. I mean, for months and months, this was huge news splashed around our media, the caravan, the threat the need to build a wall. But these are people who, in large part, have been destroyed. Their lives and nations have been destroyed by the lunatics who run the United States. And now, as they try to flee to, to save their lives, they're once again turned into the enemy by these same people. And we believe it. And I don't blame people for believing it, because I believed it for many, 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 many years. But let me guarantee you, it is not true. What we're told is simply not the truth. There is the fear, uh, the use of fear among American people and any human being. You scare them about their jobs and their security and the stranger people coming. It's, there is a na human natural here and we have a politician who used that just to create these kind of hate or in the end, even you, you look to the other, are not really human. It's okay to be stopped behind that wall, not coming in, and maybe kids dying, and no problem, because they don't look at them as a human anymore. This is what 
going on in the USA. USA, it's again was stolen from its people and now nobody can come there except if you are coming from Britain or Ukraine or you have a European accent. This is always this racist history in USA has existed. But when talking about Honduras and similarly to Venezuela, Honduras. Uh, Honduras. One thing before going to Honduras, Venezuela, the root cause for what happening. Venezuela main main product, main living source is oil. USA in agreement with Saudi Arabia in Obama time, they try to flood the market with oil to attack states like Venezuela, Iran, Russia, and By that, bringing the price down. Exactly. So Second, add to that, the sanction added to Venezuela. And it's very interesting. They brought the price down, but we're still paying the same amount for the gas, which is, you know, and very interesting. Uh, not mentioning the long history of intervention from Chavez time. USA tried to make coups, tried to assassinate him. But anyway, from Obama, late in, in second term, he started to work. And maybe, I don't know, uh, sorry about saying second term. In Obama time, before Donald Trump, he started the whole issue of sanction and the oil issue against Venezuela, which created later what we have now. And then the U so the USA behind what's happening now in Venezuela. So what's happening now is and not the only same is I mean a lot of it has been caused by the, the food shortages and everything else. Did the United States cause the food shortage? Exactly. Yeah. That's what I'm saying here. Why that happened? Because sanctions add to that the, the whole manipulation of flooding the market of oil just to bring down states like Venezuela, Iran, and Russia take some uh, money out of their uh, bucket. But Henderos, another copy. First thing Obama did in office when it came to foreign policy was the coup in Henderos. Yeah. We had a democratically elected president there, and this is the same story happening again and again and again. Musaddaq in Iran, in, uh, Al Yandi in, uh, in Chile, Patrice Lumumba in Africa. Copy after copy after copy of American involvement going, making a coup through their thugs and CIA change the state to become open to the American company to come there and do whatever they want to. Because basically, South America, it's, sorry to say that, say that but American considered it like the whole house for them. Cuba, it was in the time of Batista, people working only in the land. Bring a socialist government there, bring education and medicine and free health to people, doesn't work with the USA. They sanction Cuba, they sanction Venezuela, they sanction any country that isn't out of their market rule. But if we let the Cuban do what they want to, not involved in their business, Iranian do what they want to, the Congo do, like when I mentioned Patrice Lumumba, or the people in Chile do what they want to, without intervention from outside, they won't end up in a progressive regime like we have, we have now. The coup happened in Iran led what we have now to an oppressive government there. And that was back in the 1950s. Yeah, and yeah. I am not with them, but I, don't, but I, I am with them to, against the in USA intervention in their business. But I don't support the state as a sheikh or, or a religious person. No, this is... This is the result of, again, the American intervention of the region. We end up with regressive states and theoretical... The like theocratic states. States. Yes, yes. Because the real alternative, what people need, a secular democratic state for everybody, that doesn't work with the American. Yeah, they, it's not allowed. It's not allowed. Mazen, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Th uh, thanks for having me, Jack, and uh, it's a big subject. Uh, I hope I wouldn't go on ranting, but again, uh, I hope people read history before making their mind uh, about um, important issues like what happened in Venezuela. It's leading for people catastrophes. Yes. It's not an easy issue. And don't uh, necessarily believe what you're being told by CBC, CTV, Global, CNN. I mean. 
I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying uh, don't trust them. They're not, they're not worthy of our trust. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.